Hello, my name is Rachel Hart and I'm a geriatric medicine physician at the Norton Neuroscience Emory Center. And I'm gonna be talking today about the stages of dementia and what to expect for your loved one. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, um, this will help us to identify the stages of dementia, understand common behavioral disturbances associated with each stage, and then also identify tasks for caregivers in each stage of the dementia. So starting with the stages, the earliest stages of a dementia or what we term as a neurodegenerative condition is something called mild cognitive impairment. And a lot of our patients aren't diagnosed in this very early stage because it may be miscommunicated or it may be overlapped with normal aging. So it can often be missed. But for those patients living with mild cognitive impairment, about 50% of them will develop early stages of Alzheimer's within the next five years. While someone lives with mild cognitive impairment, the memory issues can be very mild and typical symptoms are gonna be things like having orientation um, difficulty only really with time relationships. So appointments may be difficult to remember if not written down, but they're generally oriented to time and place. There can be a slight impairment in problem solving so tasks or skills that require a lot of planning, like maybe packing for a trip or planning a family gathering can become very overwhelming. There's generally consistent slight forgetfulness. Um, they may not remember who was at a family gathering or they may triple check their finances to ensure that they're managed correctly, but they're generally doing those finances on their own. And then often there's a slight impairment at work or in social situations. The next stage is what we term as the early stage of dementia. For a lot of people, mild cognitive impairment is a pre-dementia or, or a condition that will lead into further stages of dementia, but it's much more common for our patients to be diagnosed at the earlier stages of dementia. Um, early stage can last for two to four years and typical symptoms are gonna be things like a recent memory loss that can affect job performance. So now these people are given specific tasks or instructions, and they're no longer able to remember what they were just asked to do. Confusion about places becomes very common, and these people can get lost very easily in familiar places, such as driving to the barber shop or driving to the grocery store. It becomes very common to lose initiative and becomes common to have difficulty starting new projects. Changes in mood or possibly personality can occur, and routine chores that they can do are often taking longer to do than before. And this is really where we see issues starting to arise with management of finances and whether bills may be paid on time. In the early stage, the person with dementia can often recognize that something's wrong um, and they often can recognize that they don't want friends or family to notice. And because of that, these people who live with early stages of dementia may start modifying their activities. They may stop doing things that they've always enjoyed. So it's not uncommon to see people or hear people um, stopping to help at church activities. Um, they may no longer meet friends to play cards or do other activities. And it often becomes difficult for them to leave the house by themselves to shop or visit friends um, because they just don't want other people to notice something's wrong. And because of this, anxiety and depression can be very common behavioral symptoms we'll see. During the early stage, this is the most important time to consider completing your advanced directives. Advanced directives include just a healthcare and financial power of attorney or someone who's designated as a substitute decision maker and also a living will. These documents outline what kind of healthcare interventions someone would want in the future, so when health worsens or at the end of life. And it is important to complete these documents when someone can speak about their wishes. And in the early stages of dementia, most people can still be very clear about some of the things that they would want done or who they would want a decision maker to be for themselves. Also in the early stage of dementia, someone living with dementia can be left alone for periods of time. And it's often where we'll see things like reminder notes, post-its, calendars, um, or even reminder calls that can help with medicines and meal management. Then we move on to the moderate stage of dementia. 
And this stage is the longest and can last up to 10 years of the disease. Because it's so long, it's broken into an early moderate stage and a late moderate stage. Within the early moderate stage, this is where we see more consistent trouble with driving and problems following directions for recipes for cooking. We may also start seeing people forgetting to turn the stove off um, and consistently forgetting to take medications, even when they may be set up into a pill box or something to, to organize and remind them for medicines. The late moderate stage, um, in this stage, uh, these people have trouble recognizing friends and often family members. We're very repetitive and there's often trouble finding the right word in conversations. There's an inability to focus attention and reading or watching TV can become difficult or impossible. Also in late moderate stage, trouble with bathing and dressing becomes very common. And this is often um, also associated with a person refusing to have help. The late moderate, we start to expect or we can see hallucinations. Within the moderate stage, it's also important for anazognosia. And this is a medical term that means that a person has a lack of insight or an awareness where they don't recognize they have a disease. And oftentimes this can be misrepresented and thought that a patient is in denial that they don't have problems, but when in fact they just have a brain disease that impacts their cognition and takes away their insight. So because of the anazognosia, patients who live with moderate stage dementia don't generally recognize they have dementia. The other thing about moderate stage, behavior, moderate stage dementia is that we very commonly will see neuropsychiatric symptoms. Neuropsychiatric symptoms can range from a sleep cycle disruption where someone may wake at three in the morning and expect that it's daytime and get up and try to get ready for their day. Or it may be that they can't sleep at night, they're up and they're sleeping during the day and at night we're restless or walking through the house. Confabulation is a very common symptom and this is where people will make up stories as their memory fails. So as short-term memory progresses, we remember fewer details about our day, but we're trying to fill those gaps and trying to understand what happens. And it comes out as stories that can often be very wild or bizarre. We can also see delusions. And these are things um, where people will misrepresent something in their environment or something that's happened. So if someone loses an object like a, a watch or a favorite necklace, it may suddenly jump to, it must have been stolen. Hallucinations are where someone may see or hear things that aren't there. And some common hallucinations may be things like seeing people in the house, having people over for dinner or children in, and they haven't been there. And a very common neuropsychiatric behavior is something called sundowning. And sundowning just means that as night, as night falls, um, confusion levels increase. Oftentimes um, with sundowning, people won't recognize their surroundings and they're often not recognizing home and asking to go home or to be taken home. One of the most important things to remember about moderate stage from a caregiving aspect um, is that moderate stage is typically where we see people living with dementia needing much more assistance with personal care. So things related to hygiene, like getting a bath, um, getting dressed appropriately every day. Um, these people are now needing assistance to do those tasks. And um, number one goal actually becomes safety. So because of moderate stage dementia and worsening memory and inability to recognize their problems with their memory, um, safety awareness becomes very low or non-existence. Um, so stairs, um, anything that increases fall risk, um, needs to be blocked off, maybe doors to basement stairs locked. Um, because again, safety awareness is very low and we may not recognize home, especially at night, things like wandering can become a risk where someone may leave their house to try and find home, but once they're out the door walking in the yard, they may not be able to find their way back in. Um, so considering things like locked doors and door alarms to keep them safe from wandering. And it's also appropriate to consider a medical identification bracelet, something that identifies them as having memory loss and then some way to um, communicate um, or connect with a caregiver if they are 
if they have wandered and have become lost. And then with poor safety awareness in the moderate stage, the person with dementia can no longer live alone, but they need assistance from loved ones and caregivers. And then the last stage of dementia is the severe stage. And this stage is the shortest, but can last from one to three years. So common things or features about severe stages of dementia is that the person now no longer recognizes family or their self-image when looking in a mirror. Weight loss happens even when eating a balanced diet, and there's an increased tendency to sleep, often sleeping more hours than they are awake. In the severe stage, um, these people must rely totally on others for care, and they require around the clock 24 hour supervision. These people can't always communicate with words, and sometimes because of it, they may use grunting sounds. They may want to touch everything or put things in their mouth, they may experience a loss of bladder control, um, generally urinary control, but sometimes a feces. And for those people with very severe stages of dementia, they can be more likely to experience seizures, have difficulty swallowing, or maybe prone to skin infections. The most common behavior associated with severe stages is generally apathy. And apathy is just a lack of interest, concern, or motivation. And this may look as, as someone sitting still, maybe staring into space or staring out a window. And it's really because their brain doesn't have that on switch to motivate and complete a task. Um, because patients have apathy, this can lead to increased hours of sleeping and again, leading to having more um, hours of sleep than they are awake during the day. And the other thing that becomes very common in severe stage is that communications of basic needs become difficult. Um, a patient living with dementia will still experience feelings of sadness, being scared, being lonely, or even having pain. And those basic needs, if they're unable to communicate them, is often the cause of any kind of agitated behaviors. And so if caregivers can anticipate these needs and provide comfort, oftentimes those agitated behaviors can be abated. And then in the severe stage, um, as a caregiver, um, we're really providing direct hands-on care. So not only are our um, personal hygiene tasks needing assisted, but things like um, dressing or bathing now becomes total care where someone has to have all those things done for them. And for some people, they, they actually need assistance with transferring um, from a chair to a wheelchair or from a bed to a bathroom, um, and even with tasks like walking. The hardest thing about the severe stage too is that um, tough decisions need to be made when it's no longer able to have a loved one at home um, or if the, the goal is for them to stay at home, um, how much extra support they can have being there to provide that direct hands-on care with a loved one. Hopefully this was a good review about the stages of dementia and common behavioral disturbances and understanding these stages and behaviors um, I do believe helps caregivers um, provide better care for their loved ones because overall our, our goal is really to make sure that persons living with dementia have good care, but that we also still respect the person they are um, and allow them to live with their disease with dignity. And that is all for me. Thank you for, for joining us today.